Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome to episode 15 of this Perfect Ratio run. And today it's really exciting because we're going to be doing my favorite build or maybe even builds because this is a two for one episode. Why? Because we are going to be building warpers. And in order to build warpers, you have two options. You can either build this straight from the Graviton Lens. Um, not the most efficient way to do it considering it's only one per one. So you're going to need to build a lot of Graviton Lenses. Instead, the second alternative that you have is actually going for pur uh, not purple, green science. And the green science is actually turned into eight warpers at a time. And if we look at that recipe, if you look at the uh, recipe for green science, you will see that one graviton lens actually turns into two gravity matrices. So instead of getting a one for one, you get a two for one in terms of the green science, and then that turns into 20 warpers. So it's way more efficient to make warpers from green science. But of course, you do actually need to actually produce the green science, which means you also need a second item. And that is something we have already been building before, namely the, uh, what are they called? Quantum chips. Not sure why I forgot that. So that means we are actually uh, going to use the second recipe, not this one. There we go. The advanced recipe, because we are so advanced. And the reason I really like this build is because it's actually kind of the gateway to um, the rest of the game, the end game, so to speak. Um, because what we are actually going to be doing is we, this will allow us to warp all over the place. Now, we are going to make a build that is actually going to produce one green science per second instead of the three that we were using before. Why are we going to do that? Well, um, it actually helps to kind of keep the scale of the build a little bit in the control. And that is going to be really useful because, uh, well, actually, uh, let me show you at the end. Let's keep that a, a little bit secret for now and exciting as a result. So what we are going to need to get the uh, warpers is the green signs. But what do we need for green signs? Well, we just saw that we need some graviton lenses and we actually don't need that many. Um, let me see if I put this in correctly. This should be, yeah. This will allow me to put a belt in between. We only need two assemblers producing um, the science, uh, not the science, the graviton lenses. There we go. And so the second item we need is, of course, the graviton lens. Now, we are going to be producing that down here. I already put in the belt and that should be, assuming I align this properly, around here. So this is going to be the graviton, not the graviton, the quantum chips. There we go. Graviton lenses and quantum chips. Now, in order to make quantum chips, as you remember, you, we need plane filters and we need processors. So we are going to put in a belt for one and a belt for the other. I like this. And before we do that, let's focus a little bit on the new item because we also need graviton lenses. They need diamonds. Diamonds are pretty straightforward to make, so that is nice. But the second item that it needs is strange matter. And that is something we have not been creating before. Why not? Because it actually needs uh, a building that we haven't produced, uh, or that we actually did produce in the last episode. We haven't produced so far. And that's the particle colliders. Now, particle colliders are huge and very energy draining buildings. And... Um, we are going to be putting in uh, four of those. I said four of those. There we go. Let me make sure the belt is there. Yeah. Um, they are huge, um, but they are awesome. I just, I just really like how they look. And they will be producing strange matter. Now, uh, I am not going to run you through the math. I've done that in a lot of episodes, but just trust me, this is going to be one of those builds where we actually have perfect ratios with a small nuance because we are using the mark 3 assemblers um we actually uh, have a bit of over capacity here and there in our build because the the mark 3 assembler is just so damn fast it's actually using more than um or is able to produce more than we need and actually i need to flip this around so apologies uh, let me do it like that one two three four and then the last one and it's a little bit annoying because, um, not like that, not like that. Align it, probably, TDA. There we go. 
Uh, it's a little bit annoying because it has a, a sides uh, and only entrance at the front. So it's kind of like the oil refinery in that re regard. Uh, why is that annoying? Well, um, it's a little uh, easier to align them like this. It's a bit more compact, but this means that there's nothing in the back. Uh, it's not a huge problem because we solve that by just putting in a belt in between. This is not a high output thing anyway. And then we just connect that to the belt like this. Uh, that means we will have the strange matter going on the belt over here. Where's strange matter? Um, I'm blind. Strange matter. Oh, there you go. And we will have strange matter going in over there. Now, um, that means we have the strange matter on this belt. And um, that also means that we need the diamonds on the other belt above this. And we won't be building that until the end of this build because it's quite simple and straightforward. I just keep losing everything, really. Diamonds, 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 where are you? I've used this so few times that I actually don't know where things are. Really? Really? I'm really blind. It's not that one. There we go. That took way longer than it should have. Okay. Anyway. Um, what do we need? Strange matter. We need particle colliders. We need iron. Yes, iron. And we need another item we haven't made yet. The deuterium. Now, deuterium is actually going to be a lot of fun as well. Because, again, deuterium is made from particle colliders. Or in particle colliders, I should say. And we are going to need uh, one, two, three, four, five five of them i believe and then we are going to be putting in a belt for that now remember we also need the iron and this is going to be the belt for the iron and we need some particle containers and those are going to be on this belt and that we are actually going to use the same principle that we've been using for the um strange matter so this is going to flip around the back flip around the back i said we go like so and then we'll have a second belt doing the same thing flip around the back so this is going to be the deuterium there we go and this is also going to be deuterium and deuterium is a pretty straightforward recipe because what does that need it just needs hydrogen and it's a pretty efficient recipe to be honest because this one I put, yes it's a pretty efficient recipe uh, because you only need 10 hydrogen to make 5 deuterium. It's also a fairly fast recipe as you can see. Uh, it's basically producing 1 deuterium per second. Uh, and it's a lot more efficient than doing it through the uh, fractionators which we haven't actually built uh, because of that reason. It's, it's just so more efficient to do it like this. It does cost you a lot of energy because these things are power hungry. Uh, let me show you because if you look at that building... They are consuming 12 megawatts each. <laughs> so this whole set of 10 is going to be uh, demanding 120 megawatts. So trust me, when we turn this on, we will have a power problem. But uh, that is nothing we can fix. It's just something to keep in mind. Now, that also means that we actually need some hydrogen. And we are going to be stealing the hydrogen from our ILS that we'll be putting in here to drain the warpers. So this is actually going to be a reverse belt. And then just as a reminder, this is going to be the deuterium. This is going to be the iron. This is going to be the particle containers. And then this is going to be hydrogen. Hydrogen. There we go. All right. And that is already a quite a nice little part of our build over here. Now, as you can see, we're going to use a lot more than this, but this is actually going to be one of the, uh, not necessarily shorter build, but it has a lot of, lot of little uh, interesting things going on in the build itself um, that make it really fun to build, but also um, I, just, just, I just really like it. I'm also going to need a lot more belts than this, so let me go and find my ILS that has the belts. Belts, belts, belts. It's the middle one, I should have known that. And now let's actually put up the demand here a little bit because I think we're going to need a lot more than 2,000. Anyway, um, what else do we need? Uh, yes, so we are going to be putting in two more belts. Just as a little placeholder for the moment. Because we are going to need a few other items. Specifically, uh, we're going to focus a little bit on the building for this. We need plane filters and we need processors. Well, plane filters is something we'll need about eight of. 
And let me make sure I align this properly. I don't think it really matters that much, but I think this should do. And then it was dark. And why was it dark? Because I just <laughs> realized I made a little mistake. I put in one too many uh, towers of green science. And as a result, my spacing was off. So I removed one and relocated all this a little bit upwards so that we actually have a room left for everything that comes after this. Now, what we are going to use this belt on the top for is taking it all the way down here. And then this is going to be the plane filters, as we just discussed. And we need eight of them. So that means we have four over there and oh, all the way around. There we go. Tap, 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 tap. There we go. And we have eight over there. And that also means that we need a second belt, of course, to supply the other half of the plane filters, which is going to be down there. And then finally, we are going to have the processors on this belt. So again, this is going to be the plane filters. And then processors go down over here. Now, we need um, Casimir crystals and titanium glass for this build. And that means that because the, here there's room for three spaces over here, we can have the Casimir crystals up here. And then we are actually uh, going to swap that, swap that around. Now, I just realized this is going to be the titanium and then the uh, glass is going to go down here why because that turns out to be work better with the titanium glass which is going to be on not this rail this rope on this belt now we are going to need um seven a total grand total of seven assemblers using titanium glass or making titanium glass i should say uh, which is one of my other favorite items because it just need space materials even though it's pretty a pretty late game item um and that is going to go over here now the casimir crystals are going to be on top and we need three of those so that's one two three casimir crystals and you might remember from last time they need some hydrogen they need some graphene and they need titanium crystals now and this is a part of the build that i really enjoy we are going to be putting the uh, Casimir crystals on here, by the way, just so we don't forget. Now, what we can actually do is we are going to make the titanium crystals over here. We need three, not two, three assemblers making titanium crystals. And you might already see the writing on the wall here. Because this is one of the nice elements where we can kind of combine different items into our build. So, how are we going to do that, you ask? Well... First of all, we will need the room for this belt. Okay, so a few things. Um, we need organic crystals and titanium here. But we also need titanium on this part of the build. Now, that means that we can use the uh, titanium on this specific area. And all the way through here. So that means that this can draw in the titanium for the titanium crystals. We can use the titanium glass over here. And then we need this to draw in the titanium crystals. So if we draw this belt, that should work just fine. So we'll have the titanium crystals over here. And then the titanium itself is going to go down there. Now, we also need some water and we need some glass for this. So that means because we are out of room anywhere else, we are going to have to put the glass on this belt and that leaves some water on this belt and of course this belt needs to be a little bit bigger than that there we go so we will have titanium glass and then we'll have the glass here and then we'll have the titanium and not the titanium the water there we go um so this titanium is being used in two pretty end game items and it's going to be using on, on both now um, the other thing that we need is some graphene over here and the graphene is going to come from up here a little corner and then all the way down there so this is going to be the graphene now if you remember we need the graphene for something else as well and that is the um, particle containers they also need graphene Okay, now before we forget, we actually also need the processors. The B processors are going to be down here. One, two, there we go. And we are going to need six 
assemblers to make them. We are going to need two assemblers making the processors. So this is going to be processors times two. Then we are going to need three making components. There we go. And that is going to be these two. And then we have a nice little last one for the circuit boards. It's pretty familiar maybe by now. It looks similar to one of the previous builds we've done. Um, what we are going to do is we are going to take the circuit boards down the back. We are also going to take the components here down the back. And that means that the front is all open to export these processors over here. And that should fix that. Now, of course, in order to make these um, circuit boards, we are going to need some iron. And the iron is going to come from all the way down there. And we are also going to need some copper. And the copper is, has a two-fold use because we also need copper for the components. So remember, copper and silicon. That leaves the silicon. So the silicon is going to come from down here. Now, just to make sure that we don't forget what we were actually doing, let's mark this up. So this is going to be iron. This is going to be copper. And then this is going to be silicon. This is going to be the components. And then, of course, last but not least, this is going to be the circuit boards. There we go. All right. Now, as you might notice, we are actually down to some pretty basic materials. We need glass, we need iron, we need some copper, we need some silicon. And that means that we are going to be producing them right down here rather than all the way in the back. Uh, we need some higher class items up there, but we also need the basics. And I don't want to be drawing in belts from all the way in the back. So what we're going to do is this. We are going to have two builds here. And we're going to have a little production smelting facility over here. We are going to need 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Sorry, actually we need 9 smelters with titanium. And then we're going to need 4 smelters with glass. And the glass is actually going to go straight down the middle. Uh, like this. We are also going to need some water, which is going to come all the way from down there. We are also going to need some iron and we're going to need some copper. So let's put those in. So remember, this is going to be the titanium. Like so. And the titanium is actually going to be produced in the back. And then we have a pretty simple belt with titanium ore coming in over there. So the output will be on this side. Now that leaves the glass. So the glass is actually going to come down here. We need four of those. And there we go. Glass is made from stone. And now the nice thing is because we have the stone in the back. Or we can have, actually have the stone here in the back. There's an extra space in here. But it doesn't matter at this point with the speed of our uh, sorters. So we can just do it like that. And it looks a little bit cleaner. Why? Because we also need two smelters with iron. And because of the space that we've left, that means that we can have another belt incoming here with some iron ore. There we go. Now, that leaves the copper. And the nice thing is we need exactly three smelters producing copper over here. So once again, that means that we have an equal row of titanium and copper over there. Now, in order to make this work, we actually need to remove this belt. This is going to be the water. This is going to be the iron. And if we pull in the water a little bit like this, um, sorry, we actually need the copper ore as well, before I forget. There we go. And then what we can do is we can have the copper go on this belt. Whoa. That was a little bit deleted too fast. Apologies for that. Because the idea was that it was going to go down here. And then of course we had it all the way up here. And if you place the belt so it becomes disconnected. You can delete it safely. But that was a little bit too quick there. And that means that the water that we also still need. Goes down the middle here. So that means that we, have a, we can put an ILS somewhere here. 
that it's requesting all these base materials, requesting uh, all these ores, and then we have this part of our production pretty much done already, with the exception of the uh, silicon. But we can easily fix that by placing the silicon over here. We are going to need eight of those. So that's going to be nice and quick like that. Silicon, that is. There we go. And we do it like that. Now, I like straight lines, so we are going to be putting the silicon on this belt. And that means that we can have the silicon ore on this belt. And this is going to be the ore. So, reminder. Now, we are going to be putting our attention to the top here again for a moment. Because what we need is some assemblers. Now, let's see. Um, let's not... Have I been building Mark II assemblers, actually? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll upgrade that in a sec. Uh, in case you don't know, you can mass upgrade stuff. We actually don't want to upgrade sorters or anything else. And just do it like this. And everything is now Mark III. There we go. That was easy. Um... And let's make sure we actually are building Mark III. I'm so used to using the Mark II buys now, I actually kind of overlooked that. Um, yeah, so let's see. What else do we need? We are going to need some particle containers. And is this the correct spacing? Yeah, close enough, I think. Uh, particle containers. There we go. Three of them. And remember, they are on this belt. So if we do it like that, that should work. And then um, we can have another belt in between here. We can actually move these down a little, I think. There we go. Now they're actually on the uh, belt. Why? Uh, because um, we are going to need the graphene that is going to go on this belt. Remember, this is the graphene belt over here. That is going into our Casimir crystals as well. But these things also need graphene. So if we take up our belt a little notch over here. Notch. And then um, we, we can reach this into our particle containers. Now, particle containers need a little bit of a weird combination of mats because they need graphene, which is a chemical item, but they also need turbines. So we are going to be putting in three belts. Like so. And then the turbines are going to be on this side. Now, remember, turbines need engines and i need twice as much we need three turbines and then it means we need six engines and we also need some cogs and we need some um, magnetic coils that was the word i was looking for so this is going to be the turbines three of those then we are going to be putting in the engines that is six that we're going to be putting down there then we need some cogs that are going to be on here and then we need the magnetic coils, which are going to be on um, here. Now, this actually took me a while to figure out how to do this exactly in such a way that it actually works. Um, there's probably different options there as well. But the engines are going to go down the back. And, the, um, and this is actually a little bit uh, important that you, you, you put everything on the correct belt. Otherwise, you'll get into issues with the sorters. Uh, so if you're building this yourself, make sure that you pay attention to things like that. Because yeah, you will get into issues otherwise. Um, we are going to be putting the engines here, like I said. We are going to be putting the um, magnetic coils over here. Which might not be the most intuitive because these are far away. But the reason we're doing that is uh, in order not to get into issues with the belts, like I said. Then we are going to be having the iron go straight down here. Um, down there and remember the iron is also used for later parts of this build um, but we actually don't need that much iron that we can just use one belt for it so that's really nice and then we are going to be also using the same iron so remember this is iron 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 we are going to use the same iron for the um, cocks and the cocks need to be in the different orientation in terms of the belt because they also need to reach these three and if you 
reverse the belt, that won't actually work. And that means that these are the cogs. And because there's three items being requested on this side into the engines, that means the outpo uh, outgoing one needs to be on the other side. Otherwise, again, you run into issues with sorters for a different reason this time. And we also need some copper. Now, remember, we need the copper bars here and we need the copper here. So once again, this is one of the nice little things about this build, really using the same item in multiple places. Um, what else? We need some... Um, magnets so we'll need magnets over here and yeah that is another really nice part of our build so now we have all the base materials here for the um, quantum processors we have most of the stuff we need for the um, um, graviton lenses and then we are pretty down, much down to some basics already for the rest of our build but we're not quite done yet, so bear with me for a moment. Because what we need is uh, a lot of smelters for iron. We are going to need some uh, copper and we're going to need some magnets. And again, one of the nicer things about this build, I think, is that you can be really efficient about those. We are going to need 13 of these. I did my math correctly. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah. Like so. So these are going to be the iron. And then we are going to need 12 magnets. One more. One more. There we go. So remember, this is going to be the magnets. There we go. And then, last but not least, we need the copper, which is going to be down here. Did I leave enough room there? I don't think I did. Hold on, hold on. Because we need two belts there. Uh, we need one belt for the copper like this. And yes, this is the copper belt. And then the magnets are going to go down here. Why? Because otherwise you get into the complex issue that I, I really like this as a straight line so if you do it like that it's a little neater than if you reverse the belt order on these two and this is going to be the uh, copper as I said there we go and now again a small detail but something I really like is that you can actually use one belt supplying all the uh, iron ore for this and then we are going to need a second belt of copper ore. And the way I like to do it is like this. And why it will become apparent in a second. Because we are going to do this. And this. And then something like this. And why are we going to do it like that? Well, we are going to be putting in an, I an ILS. An ILS in here like so and we can actually move that in one little pitch itchy pitchy tiny bit there we go and then we'll have that ILS over there I will connect that up later um we are going to need to get in the um, organic crystal that actually didn't draw up yet. So organic crystal needs to go in here because this just doesn't just need graphene uh, or titanium. I mean, it also needs the uh, organic crystal. So that is going to be this belt. And this is why we left that space. Organic crystal, where are you? There you are. So many items in this game. Really nice, but sometimes it gets a little confusing. And now we should have just enough room to do this and this. So this is going to be, again, the um, organic crystal, which is over here, as well as the graphene, which is over there. And that leaves <clears throat> a lot of room over here to make our uh, chemical facilities. Now, we are going to be putting the um, copper ore on this belt. And now we have three belts left here. And what we're going to do with that is uh, I'm just going to put in a little belt to make sure I get the spacing correct. We are going to remove this, but this is the belt for spacing. 
uh, we are going to be putting in our chemical facilities. And we are going to be, be placing them here. One, two, three. And this is going to be producing the acid. And then uh, we can take out this belt. The acid is going to be supplied on this belt down here. Roughly something like that. Because what are we going to be putting in over here? One, two, three, four, six. Yes, that, that is how I count. One, two, three, four, six. <laughs> and then we are going to be putting in the graphene over here. So this is six. And that is, again, a perfect ratio. So that's what we like. And this is going to be producing the graphene that is going to be on this belt. So again, acid on this belt. And then graphene on this belt. Now, the really nice thing about this is that... Um, the, the ratios here are just, just so nice because we, we don't just need graphene. In order to get graphene, we need um, some graphite as well. But graphite is also going to be used in a second part of this build. And now I do need to be a little bit careful about my spacing. Because the bane of my existence is chemical plants. We need plastic. Why do we need plastic? Well... We need some um, organic crystals. And in order to make those, we need six again. And they are a one-to-one -one ratio. Remember that from one of our previous builds. So this is going to be the organic crystals down here. There. Uh, why did I space them like this? Well, because plastic needs graphite. And graphene needs graphite. So... What are what can we do? We are going to be putting in the graphite over there. And here we have a similar issue. We need oil and we need oil. So what we can do is put in a belt with oil over here. And now we have that sorted for both these two belts. Now again, this these don't need that many oil. You have need for more than one belt. So uh, and we actually only we don't need a belt for plastic because we can insert those directly. Now we're not completely done because we still need an outgoing belt for the organic crystal. That will be this one all the way down there, and that will just wrap around and look awesome over there. Now the interesting thing is, in order to make this, we also need water and we need oil. Well, we already said we are going to be be putting the oil in this belt in the middle. Uh, oil. And that means that we need the water, not here, because there's the outgoing belt. But that means we need water over here. Now remember, we also needed water up there. So once again, one of those little tiny bit of things in this build where you can kind of use the same belt for multiple uses. Now we also needed some silicon. And because of the way it works out in terms of how many materials you need for each ILS, we are going to need to have an... ILS elsewhere supporting this because this ILS will be very much busy supplying everything else. Um, remember, we already had the um, titanium ore over here. We had the iron ore over here. And then we had the... Um, oh, sorry. This was the stone, I mean. Stone. And then we had the iron ore over here. So this is one, two, three, four. In combination with the copper... Plus one for the warper request. And yes, we need warpers for everything. So uh, that means this is completely full with one, two, three, four slots going into the ores and then one for warpers. So that means we need to have some other ILS supplying everything else. And the interesting thing is that we can actually put an ILS over here in terms of how close you can get. And that should be over here. And then this ILS can be supplying several things. It can do the copper. It can do the water over here. And yes, this is going to be a second thing requesting water. And then we can do this second requesting of stone over here. Now we do need oil over here as well. But we are going to be requesting that from the same ILS that is supplying it here. Because we want this to supply these three materials along with the... Um, 
iron ore over here. Like so. And then again, we have four requesting materials along with warpers for that one. Um, yes, we are getting close to done. We're not quite done yet, though. But getting close. Um, because what we also need is... Remember those diamonds from before? Yes. All the way in the back over here. We are going to be making those as well, of course. And we also need another item, which is the um, graphene. And the graphene is going to come from down here. Oh, oh. I messed that up a little bit. The graphene is going to go all the way down here. And then it needs to be on this belt. Because remember, this was our graphene belt. That was being shared between the graph... Uh, sorry, the graphite belt, which was being shared between the graphene and the plastic. Um, yeah, so that means that we have an issue in terms of how to get the oil over here. Not that big of an issue, to be honest, but we do need to make some allowance for that. Uh, so the way we can handle that is just making a little splitter in here. Like so. Is going to be drawing in this, and then we can have the oil coming over here. So remember, this is going to be oil. Uh, now, remember that you do need to set the splitters, otherwise, you get a huge mess. So we will do that like that. And then we have incoming over here. And then we can have incoming coal over there because we need to make some graphite. Now it would help if I actually draw these things in the correct way. Okay, there we go. Um, almost done. Because we are going to be putting in another ILS. And we should be able to place that. Nice and sweet over here. If I aligned those correctly. Yes, I did. Now, this is really annoying how it sometimes doesn't. I just want to do a straight line over here. Oh, fine. I'll do that one first. Yes, yes, yes. Can I do a straight line? No. Fine. I'll do it first like that. Delete that one. And then make the last connection. Really annoying. Anyway, uh, this is going to be oil, coal. That also means that we need some oil over here. We need some water over here. And then we have silicon. And then we have another four materials. Um, that leaves the construction of... Cop uh, sorry, graf graphite. And once again, I really like the way this works out. Give me a second to make sure I count this out right. So we need four of those. Am I low on power? Yes, I am. Do I have any power with me? No, I don't. Back to our little hub over here. There should be power in one of these things. There we go. That should keep me powered up for a long time. Uh, this was going to be graphite. Just four of them over here. Because the other four over here are going to be the diamonds. Where we also need four. And they can go straight on this belt on the top. Now this is not exactly enough just yet. So we are going to need quite a few more. To be exact, we are going to need two more rows of those. And one other nice thing I like about this build. Again, I like so much about this build. Is that you can put in a belt like this. And that will feed straight into this. And then the coal belt can be like this. Wrap around over here. And then go straight in here. And I'm not sure why this still says iron. And do it like that. Now the interesting thing about the diamonds is that it is an exact one to one ratio with the graphite. 
So you can just feed them straight into it like this and then straight onto the belt like that. And that sorts that out. Um, yeah, and then that is it. We have all the base materials now. It's not the most complicated build in terms of new buildings, new constructions, and anything like that. I just really like how the ratios work out. It's a little bit of a shame that we are left with this open space, but once again, you can put some uh, solar panels, for example, in here to make sure you use the room. Uh, God knows you need the power, so you might as well use all the open space you have for solar panels. Um, but what we, of course, still need to do is hook everything up and then make sure that we are good to go. And then there's a few more things I want to um, show you after this, so make sure you stick around for that. Okay, be right back. And we're back. And as you can see, we've gotten several uh, milestones. We produced our first green sign. We've produced our strange matter, deuterium. Uh, apparently you don't get a milestone for warpers, but I think that you get that while you actually warp, which we haven't done yet. Uh, you might also notice that even though this is working and it's uh, it's also stocked up quite a little bit and that is because we are running very low on hydrogen remember hydrogen which initially you had an issue because you were producing oil you got hydrogen and you had nothing to do with it well we have plenty to do with it now because the deuterium needs for um, the strange matter as well as the casimir christmas they suck up so much hydrogen that whatever stockpiles of hydrogen you had, you will probably be running out really quickly. Now, uh, we have hydrogen in our builds already. Um, I've actually produced several um, warpers already. Don't forget to also get some warpers for yourself. You need to manually slot them into your uh, fuel chamber. Uh, and that will allow you to warp all over the place. Now, the fact that we're actually quite low on hydrogen is not a big problem. As you can see, we are producing some uh, green science. Uh, we are actually not really producing it because all the green science we are producing is being sucked up by this. Uh, normally, if you have this whole build full at speed, it will be producing about one green science per second, assuming you have enough um, energy etc going in so that also means this will only siphon off about 10 percent of that because this is only getting in one green science per 10 seconds so it's 10 percent of the output so this is roughly overflowing with one green science per second and making a, uh, about one warper per second along with that so that might not sound like a lot in terms of warpers, but it's way more than you actually need because especially in the early part of the game, you don't need that many warpers. Uh, it will continuously be producing it. And that means, as you can see, we already have a small stockpile of warpers as we are now uh, building and that will only grow larger as we continue. Now, of course, you might want to speed this up and this is the thing that I wanted to show you all. Um, if you use this build, I made it in such a way that you can actually fit it in the second tier as well. So if that happens to be nice for your planet, you can use that. Uh, but you should also be able to fit this four times below each other. So you can actually, if you want, um, use one, two, three, four, five, six in one area of your planet it will take about one quarter of your planet a little less from fifth probably um, but you could actually be producing six green signs per second with just placing this this build six times below each other and as a bonus you also get some warpers now of course if you are at some point producing more warpers than you actually need just take it out um, it's just literally you delete one building in this entire build but it's not that much. Uh, what you might want to do in that case, however, is limit the uh, warper production a little bit. So the storage of the warpers so that you're not overproducing them. But again, at this point of the game, you are pretty much winning. <laughs> not that you're going to really lose this game. Uh, but as soon as you have warpers, you can fly to anywhere in the galaxy. And your uh, logistic vessels can also do the same. And that also means that we uh, can now safely go to another system and fix the problem that we have which is that we are running low on copper now of course we are also running low on hydrogen as we just mentioned but we have a gas giant in our system that is actually next to our home system and gas giants have the awesome thing that they are also 
always producing hydrogen. Now, if you look at this, this seems like not a lot, only 0.25 per second. Um, but you can place 40, um, 40 gas miners on each um, gas giant. So this, if you multiply this by 40, it's actually a lot. It's 10 per second. And then, of course, it also factors in the research. So if you look at the research, you have this vein um, production over here. Vein utilization, utilization, which speeds up by 10%. Uh, by now, you have access to about four levels of that. Uh, the fifth one is also able to uh, be researched now as well. So that means that you're actually producing 40% additional uh, hydrogen on your gas giants as well so that is really nice and that will employee of the month oh okay <laughs> i actually got that as well uh apparently i didn't have that yet no that's nice i'm an employee of the month yay me um so you have all the hydrogen at that point that you need and of course there's more gas giants in other systems as well that you can then abuse and they should have all the hydrogen that you need at least in this part of the game um in order to do that, that obviously means that the next thing that we want to be building is the orbital collector, which is the thing that I couldn't remember just now. The orbital collector. Uh, we are going to need quite a few of those. And as you can see, it's a very annoying slow production, but it's worth getting it uh, at this point in the game because of the hydrogen needs that we have. Now, don't forget that in the meanwhile, you should be researching everything else that you need. And you might want to fly out to another system and get some stockpiles going of um iron ore copper ore whatever it is that you're running low on and you do so before you run out of warpers but of course uh one thing to take note of is that you never want to fly away from your system where you're producing the warpers and get low on warpers and uh, have the risk of getting stuck somewhere of course you can just use the hubs etc but make sure that once you fly to a system that you haven't been before yet uh, check how many warpers you have on you before you do that uh, it's always a good idea and save before you do that because if you overshoot with warpers it can be a hell to get back so anyway that's a free bonus tip i hope you like this content once again and if you haven't done so please consider uh, liking and subscribing this video it really helps me out and i hope to catch you in the next one